Hey everyone, Pins Gower update time. So in our last video we shot, you saw a bunch of the people down working around the vehicle. I talked about some of the components that we picked up. Pretty cool stuff going on. I'm gonna go into some of the additional devices we picked up and some of the other challenges and things we have to do with this build. But I also wanna introduce somebody very special to us, Mitch Terry. He's worked with AEM for years. He's been on the race team with Papadakis Racing slash AEM. He's also a excellent engineer fabricator. So we've incorporated his services for some of the larger devices, the gen set and the motor set, uh, to capitalize on his fabrication skills and also his engineering expertise on how to mount these. So without further ado, I want to introduce you to Mitch. Hi, I'm Mitch Terry from Protex Skid Plates. I've been working with AEM for many years as an engineer and a fabricator, worked on the race team for quite a while. Today our project is mounting the gen set. The guys here at AEM have already mocked up the assembly and got everything in position. So the first thing we do is measure it all up and make a drawing so we can get it in AutoCAD. Once we've done that, I'll cut the pieces on my CNC plasma and we'll bring them over here and weld it up. I already measured it. I already have pieces cut. And so today we're gonna actually take this off, put my pieces on, set it back on, get everything positioned just right and weld it up. These are the two front brackets that'll mount to the front of the gearbox with a tab that welds to the frame for the gen set and we have a rear bracket with a separate bracket that welds to the tube and also tubes that weld to the gen set. Okay so these are the front two brackets. They bolt to existing bolts in the gearbox that came with the car originally. They won't need to weld to the car but the tabs will weld to this. The rear bracket has a separate smaller bracket that welds to the tube and a larger bracket that actually bolts on. So this welds here and supports the back of the gen set with two tabs that are welded onto the frame. The motor itself isn't very heavy so it's easy to build a relatively lightweight mount for it, but it makes a tremendous amount of torque. So the mounts that it uses have to actually be way tougher than you think. Do you have any plans for it? Do you have any idea or are you just- Thick hunks of steel. All right, so now it looks like we've got the gen set all tacked up, thanks to Mitch. Really stoked about that step being done. Next, he's gonna be working on the bracketry and, and incorporating that into the, the actual adapter plate between the motor and the step down from torque trends. Beyond that, we've made further progress with our battery pack. We've done some cutting and, and getting that fitted up. We're not into our fabrication quite yet. Uh, and then we've got some additional devices. You've seen the inverter I've talked about with Cascadia. We've picked up this cool piece. This is a DC to DC, so this is actually steps the voltage down from 350 to 12, so we have a 12 volt circuit. I'm going to expand on that in a little bit. Um, this is also an onboard battery charger, so this charges the pack. Really nice little piece, liquid cooled. We've got a little starter harness here for everything, so uh, this is going to be mounted in one of the actual belly containers uh, that we keep on referring to. I say the belly pan all the time, but we're working on those and getting those cleaned up as well. With this build, I really want to focus on the EV part, but this is a complete conversion and we're doing a lot of other little things that we hope make a big difference in the way the vehicle performs and the way it looks. So as mentioned earlier, we're doing a body lift on it. It's about an inch and a half. Now that you've raised the body, you have to be concerned with your drop limiter straps, your shock travel length, and things like that so you don't overextend any of that. There's a lot of mass, a lot of wheel movement, a lot of unsprung weight here, and if you have something that overextends, you're gonna destroy a shock in no time, or you're gonna over limit your suspension with a, a short limiter strap. We've gone to longer drop limiters, about an inch and a half, and then we had selected these Rancho shocks these are a 7,000 series, but we found another set that was a 9,000 series. We picked up about two and a half inches in length, so we never have to worry about overextending the shock because the limiter will prevent that from happening. And in addition to that, the 9,000s are fully adjustable, so we can adjust the dampening. As a result of the battery pack weight, it's almost like there's a bunch of people in the back of the vehicle. We want to have shock and suspension that's going to keep the vehicle nice and smooth down the road, but also have it to where it's still firm enough and you don't get a whole lot of bounce. So that's why the 9000, a little bit of a heavier duty shock that's fully adjustable, makes a lot of sense in this case. I love the way this thing looks. It looks worked, but I love it. So one of the challenges is that maintaining this look while you're trying to take care of all this uh, and make it so it's a super clean environment, environment for all those components and protect it from the weather, it's a little bit of a challenge. These sections, I've actually added some paint remover, epoxy paint remover, and then we're gonna sandblast it. So a good example of what the finished product's gonna look like, this is the door for it. Still looks worked, old. The back looks pretty good. So this is gonna be rubberized, primed, and then sealed, and we're gonna use a white paint so it's a little brighter inside these boxes unless we add LED lighting inside. But this is what the finished product's gonna look like on the inside, but the outside 
still looks old school. In addition to that, with the body lift, the, the mounts that were inside were they're pretty hammered. I mean, they're old, 1971, right? The other challenge with something old and limited in production like that is the cost of these pieces. Believe it or not, these are about $80 for one of these from a, a good Pinsgauer supplier. We were lucky. Uh, we have friends in the industry. I talked to a few people and the guy said, go to Prothane. They've got a bunch of universal bushings and uh, Lo and behold, we came up with a bushing set that's almost perfectly sized for the factory ch uh, chassis mounts. So that's a, an awesome find. And I think a full set's about 20 bucks. So no offense to the Pinsgauer suppliers, but this is a pretty awesome solution. And uh, you'll see that incorporated in the build as well. So next, uh, as mentioned, we're using the, the flooring area of the passenger section, the people carrier section for our battery packs. We have a 75 kilowatt Model 3 Tesla battery pack we're working with. And we're gonna wind up, there's four sticks in that. Uh, one and two will be on the base, three and four will be on top. We had a Model 3 battery tray here that was damaged. We looked at it and said, oh, we, we keep on talking about the structural integrity and the cooling, so we're gonna capitalize on that. So we cut the tray to accommodate two. Now we needed another tray, and we actually needed another stick. So we went to the good folks down at EV West, traded out one stick for another, and because they do teardowns there often, he happened to have a couple of trays laying around, so we scored there as well. So a special thanks to uh, EV West, Michael and crew, uh, we really appreciate all the additional support you're giving us and obviously parts that are critical to the build, so thank you. I wanna show you, I'll walk over, I'm gonna drop it down. As mentioned, we measured 18 times and cut once and we're pretty lucky with the fit. There are some slight mods that need to be made, but that gives you an, this gives you an idea of how nicely they fit in. The, the goal is gonna be using, at the front end of these, there's some major structural parts that where you can actually tie into a crossbar, and then using all of the factory mounts down each side to capitalize on capturing the side of the battery uh, on both packs. And then at the tail end, we'll use some of the factory mounts. We have to shorten this up just slightly, but there'll be crossbars inserted and they'll tie in, in the back. So the packs will be really secure. This is gonna turn into sort of a flatbed. So all the hinge bolts for the existing bench seats are gonna get turned into crossbars, and there'll be a, T, a little T-slot that runs down, and then we'll have actually a flooring that will slide in, be fully supported, so it doesn't, we don't have to worry about it impacting the battery pack, but it also seals off this whole package. So we're talking about 75 kilowatt hours, so that should give us some pretty decent range. Super safe, super secure, and still using all of the factory cooling that Tesla's engineered into these battery packs, and then in addition to that, the structural rigidity that's built into these, and it's coming together like planned. If you look around the vehicle, You'll notice all of the, the lens covers are off. I talked about the DC to DC, bringing it down from 350 volts to 12 volt circuit or a low voltage environment. This vehicle originally was 24 volts. So now we're stepping it down to 12. So that means, again, sort of a project part of this, all the bulbs, all, anything that was powered up by 24 volt now has to be converted to 12. A little bit of a pain, but worth the effort because we don't want to deal with a 24 slash 12 volt environment. Uh, some of the stuff up front, like wiper motors, things you don't really think about, the horn, uh, that'll all be converted to 12 volt as well. One other thing I just want to show, because of Mitch Terry and the work he's done, he's done work with off-road racing, land speed stuff, road race, name it. Uh, he's worked with it. We have uh, some concerns about the motor location and in the event of something really bad happening, us getting T-boned, we want to protect the motor, the high voltage environment, and the fuel tank. So we're going to actually be running some roll cage tubing from mount to mount between the motor and the fuel cell. We're gonna use the factory chassis mounts and we're actually gonna capitalize on this beast right here. So we're gonna tie into this as well. So in the event something does hit on the side, everything that's outside is incredibly rigid and will protect everything from a, from a decent size impact. So again, I keep on saying it, safety, safety, safety. Uh, we're trying to incorporate it every step of the way. That pretty much wraps it up here. I suspect by the next one, we'll have the motor, batteries, and gen set fully mounted up. So I'm excited about that. If you like what you saw, hit like. Make comments down below, because I read them and I try to respond on occasion. We have a bunch of other people that do as well. And then if you want to subscribe, hit the bell so you're, you get the notification that we just launched a new one. That's a wrap and hopefully I got it. You did it, but that's over. You did, it. Oh, we're going with it. <laughs> it's so stupid. There's something wrong with me.